It's funny how one game can create such a stir in the community. I honestly, guys, why do you still watch these videos? I, I, <laughs> I'm joking. H have fun. In these developer blogs, we look into some of the development of the UI and, of course, the questing in Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord. We go into more depth and detail about what we can expect from the UI and the screens that we get from there. And, of course, we get some more information about how you're actually going to be affecting the gameplay with the quests and things that you decide to take throughout the game or don't take. Let's get straight into it. You can see in this UI screenshot that you can see all the smaller clans. You can see their lords, their banners, and what influence that they have on everyone else or you as a person on your own. You can see who's in the party and what fiefs they are. It just gives you a lot more detail and depth and information about everything in the world map Which makes it a lot easier for you to plan or where you're gonna go throughout the world And how you're gonna act in your gameplay in order to compensate for these different things and bits of information Now I really genuinely do love the new UI a lot of people have said they don't like it And I don't understand what it is that people dislike so make sure you leave your comments down below because from my perspective It looks a lot cleaner. Yes There's so much more detail that they have to actually put in because they're trying to give the player a lot more information throughout the game Warband was very simplistic, and I think that's maybe what people like. But in Bannerlord, they have so much more information they need to convey, and they're doing it in the best way possible in this cleaner and more compact UI. Furthermore, going into modding, which is everyone's favorite thing, the UI will be completely moddable. In Warband, it wasn't really very moddable, so modders were kind of stuck with what they were given in the base game. But here it's completely possible to change the UI and sculpt it to where you want your mod to be working. So I'm sure that's going to get a lot of views. They also want to make it very simple to mod it. It's not going to be difficult. You're not going to have to go into loads of different files. There's going to be some easy text files that you're going to be able to edit in order to change the UI to your preferences. But where is this UI in terms of development? We always ask this question, and this is a question that Tail Wars have always been trying to give us. They said that most of the rest of the game is in its final ish stages. A lot of it is in polishing stages, or at least the first section of the game is in polishing stages. Now the second and third sections will be getting some work, and they're probably, hopefully, in the closing stages at some point. But they have said that the UI in total is pretty much in its polishing stage. They're adding some new extra things that we saw from Gamescom, so they're adding some stuff on top of that, such as small animations, and just a little bit of polish on there, but it is in the final-ish stages of the development in the UI regards, at least. But moving on to questing and how it's actually going to work, is there going to be a storyline through a Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord? Well, we know that it is a big open-world sandbox, a bit like Warband, so there's not really going to be a linear storyline to say to follow, but like in Warband, there will be many quests that you can actually do on a much bigger scale, but they're also going to have more variety and a dynamic effect throughout the gameplay of the world, whether you choose to do them or choose to leave them, of course. They want to make the quest short in length, but still enjoyable, but they also want to make them repeatable, which is a little bit worrying for me because that means that maybe you're going to have to do a bit of grinding to do the same quest over and over again. Hopefully there'll be variety in that, but then again, this is then pushed to the side with this next part, is that you don't actually have to do them. Many of the quests you'll be offered are generated as a direct response to a situation currently happening throughout the game. It says on the developer blog that, for example, if a group of bandits are prohibiting trade in an area and have established a hideout, then you might actually be asked to dispatch these bandits by a load called Noble and then you'll have to clear the bandit hideout and things like that. And of course, like in Warband, you'll get a bit of a profit, you'll get a bit of loot from it, but still, you're going to improve your relations with that person who actually issued the quest, and now because the bandits were stopping and prohibiting trade in that area, this trade will now flow more freely, which will of course increase and have a positive effect on the local economy. So you're not just going to be gaining money and loot from this, you're actually going to be gaining some better relations and having a wider effect on the overall map. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how we can change and forge the map as we play throughout the game but like I said earlier these are repeatable quests so there could be a bit of grinding if you want to do but then again Tailwords have said that whilst they impact the game it's actually possible to completely miss out quests if you don't really like doing that sort of thing so you can still play the whole game without doing a single quest but if you want to change the dynamic of the game if you want to maybe make trade easier in a one place or make it harder in another place these quests are something you want to be doing and they'll gain you an advantage but they aren't paramount to actually playing the game. And of course, we have another screenshot here of the questing scene. We can see how long the quests are. It's just a lot more clean, a lot more set out than the whole note screen that we had in Warband, that everything was a bit clumped together, what quest you have. Here, it's on its own screen. You're going to be able to see it a lot easier. You're going to be a lot more efficient. You can tick which ones you've done, which ones you want to do, and yeah. Furthermore, when you're actually trying to find a quest, the NPCs on the city screen, they actually have a little dot next to them, which shows that they have quests to offer. So you're not, so you're not going to be spending a lot of time just wandering around, not knowing who to talk to for these quests as well. 
So it's a lot easier to distinguish the places that you can get these quests from and the NPCs that you'll have to talk to. But that's it for this week's video on the Mountain Blade 2 Battle Lord Dev Blogs. I know that I've not really posted anything other than Mountain Blade for the past few weeks, which isn't really like this channel. Normally I do like one Mountain Blade video a week and then I do videos on other games and talking about different topics. But like I said, I've been so, so busy. I've literally not had time to do anything. And these videos are pretty quick and easy to make. So I thought I'd get this one out for you guys. And then I'm going to try and work on some other videos that might take a few days to come out or maybe even weeks to come out, but I kind of want to get something other than Battle of videos out because I know a lot of people do like that sort of stuff. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you really want to support the channel, go and check out my Patreon or just come on my Discord. I'm not on it too much at the moment, but I'm going to be trying getting on it a lot more. But thank you guys for watching, and until then, I will see you in the next one.